for First Chapter Friday, we are reading Museum Mysteries, The Case of the Haunted History Museum. <clears throat> this book is by Steve Brezinoff, and we are going to read the first chapter today. And what's cool is that there is illustrations in here, which means that there is someone who made pictures in this book. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so we got a pterodactyl... Museum of Natural History flyer. We have a flashlight and a newspaper, some dinosaurs, so maybe some foreshadowing. So here are our, our characters. So we have the Capital City Sleuths, Amal Farah, age 11, favorite museum, Air and Space Museum, interest, astronomy, space travel, and building models of spaceships. Raining Sam, that's him, age 12, favorite museum, American History Museum. Interest. Ojibwe History, Culture, and Traditions. American History, Good and Bad. Clementine Wim. So her. Age 13. Favorite museum, art museum. Interests, painting, sculpting with clay, and anything colorful. And Wilson Kipper. Age 10. Favorite museum, Natural History Museum. Interests, dinosaurs, especially pterosaurs and herbivores, and building dinosaur models. So these are our players. And then we have the table of contents, which we know what that is. So the table of contents tells us where our chapters are and how many chapters there are. Ooh, this looks like a museum. So here we go. Chapter one. New exhibit. Wilson Kipper sat on the big stone bench in front of the Capital City Museum of Natural History. He held his small tablet computer on his lap, studying a map of the museum as he waited for his friends to arrive. You're sure you're okay waiting here for your friends? His mom, Dr. Carolyn Kipper, asked. I can stay for a few more minutes if you want. Wilson glanced at the time in the upper right of the tablet screen. It was 5.59 a.m. It's okay, he said. I'll be here in like, they'll be here in like 30 seconds. Wilson's three best friends, Amal, Farah, Clementine Wim, and Raining Sam, all had parents who worked at one of the museums in the Capital City Network. Since they got free passes to all of the museums, thanks to their parents' positions, the four friends took any chance they could to explore the museums together. Today, they'd be checking out the Natural History Museum. That meant Wilson would be the host since his mom worked there as a paleontologist. And, speaking of that, Mom, you better get inside, said Wilson. You're going to be late. I'll be fine. He slid his finger across the screen of the tablet and brought up the museum's website. Okay, okay, Dr. Kipper said. I'll leave you alone. At that exact moment, three bicycles rolled off the nearby bike trail heading into the direction of the museum. There they are, Wilson said as he clicked off his tablet and stood there, uh, stood up to wave at his uh, approaching friends. Bye, Mom. Dr. Kipper waved at the cyclist too. Then she ducked into the museum to start her day at work. A mall's sleek bike screeched to a stop in front of Wilson, Clementine riding her old three-speed bike and raining on his laid-back beach cruiser, followed behind at a much slower pace. Hey, Wilson, Amal said. She rolled her bike to the rack and locked it up securely. Hi, said Wilson. You guys are just in the nick of time. My mom was starting to worry about leaving me out here on my own. Is the museum even open yet? Raining asked as he and Clementine rolled up. Wilson was the only one of his friends who wore a watch. It should be opening right now. Wilson said, let's get inside. It's the first day of the new exhibit, and I don't want to waste a second. <clears throat> what is it? Said Clementine. Her pulled off bike, she pulled off her bike helmet and wiped her brow with the back of her hand. Wilson grinned. He's been excited about the exhibit for months, ever since his mom first told him about it. Pterosaurs, he said. Oh, said them all. I don't know about, I know about them. Flying dinosaurs, right? Not exactly, Wilson said as the four friends headed up the steps to the museum. Pterosaurs weren't dinosaurs. They were flying reptiles that lived during the age of dinosaurs, though. Just like Ichiosaurus weren't actually I uh, dinosaurs. They were swimming reptiles. Ichthyo what? Clementine said, furrowing her brow and looking confused. Wilson just smiled and shook his head. He loved his friends, but Clementine's mime was usually in a bucket of paint someplace, or sitting in a kiln with her pottery. She didn't know, or care, much about prehistoric beasts. Ichiosaur, Amal said, that means fish lizard, right, Wilson? 
Wilson nodded. Yep, he said as he pushed open the door to the museum's heavy he pushed open the museum's heavy front doors. The four friends stepped f into the large front chamber. The Natural hum History Museum was the oldest museum in the Capital City Network, and you could tell the moment you walked in. Everything was wooden and heavy and looked like had been around for decades. Right in the front room, which was so big that the Kipper's whole house could probably fit inside, stood the most famous dinosaur skeleton in the museum's collection, the monstrous Allosaurus. It leaned down so that its huge head stuck way out over the velvet rope that surrounded the skeleton. The dinosaur's huge mouth was open like it was about to roar or eat you. Whoa, said Raining, sounding impressed. Wilson chuckled. Oh, come on, Raining, he said. You've seen the Allosaurus model before. He used the word model instead of skeleton because it was a copy of a skeleton, not a real fossilized skeleton. Oh, that's fun. Here's a picture. So there they all are, all the people that we met. And there's the Allosaurus. Raining shook his head, his mouth hanging open and pointed up, way up, to the high ceiling of the big front room. Wilson looked up, too, to see what had his friend so impressed. Whoa! Wilson echoed when he realized what Raining was pointing at. Hanging there, with its huge wings spread wide and its long neck hanging down, was the new pterosaur model. Its enormous beak was open wide as if it w would gnaw like a giant bird. Did you know that this did you know that this parasaur was the largest flying animal of all time? Wilson told his friends. He stared up at the model hanging from the chains from the ceiling. It had a wings wingspan of up to 45 feet. Wow, said Clementine. That's pretty amazing. Wilson nodded. Its name is pretty amazing too, he said. Oh boy, here we go. Quetzal Coatless, Quetzalcoatlus. I read that it was the name for the god Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, the Aztecs, uh, for the, blah, 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 blah. Missy can't read this sometimes. I read that it was the name for the god Quetzalcoatl. The Aztecs in Central America used to worship him. His name meant feathered serpent. I can see why, said Clementine. She stepped around the big Allosaurus podium, gazing up at the Quetzalcoatlus, Quetzal Quetzalcoatlus, <laughs> as she walked. It must have looked like a terrible dragon. Wilson thought it was probably way more amazing than some silly dragon from a story, but he didn't say so. Clementine was just like that, always coming up with creative stories. Maybe that's where the stories came from, said Amal. Walking next to Clementine. Don't be silly, said Wilson. There were no people around when this guy was flying around. I mean, maybe people just found bones and stuff, said Amal. Just because I love space doesn't mean I have my head in the stars all the time. The others laughed. Amal was absolutely obsessed with astronomy, which worked out well since her father was the head archivist at the Air and Space Museum. The four friends walked the whole length of the huge flying creature, as the museum began to get crowded. It seemed like a lot of people were excited to see the pterosaur exhibit on its first day. Where should we go first? Clementine asked. Wilson opened his mouth to say, to the pterosaur exhibit, of course. But before he could get a word out, there was a loud snap from above him. Someone shouted, it's falling! Wilson looked up, as did everyone else in the museum's front hall, as the largest flying animal ever to exist broke free of its chains and came plummeting toward them. Uh-oh. So that's our first chapter. Um, I have a feeling this is a series of museum mysteries. Uh, we don't. We only have this one, so if you are interested in reading this book, we do have it in the library, and you can always come ask me to grab it. I hope you enjoyed this, and we will see you next time. Bye.